had a complete shock of my life. You don't know if they have been exposed to the virus. It felt like, okay, some shit is going on. What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today I wanted to do a follow-up to my flying in the pandemic vlog. If you haven't watched it, you can check it out here. I'll link it up in the card. I actually wanted to do more kind of like a sit-down follow-up where I actually share with you my experience and some tips that I think I can share with you guys uh, when I was flying from Southeast Asia, Singapore, all the way to Finland here in Europe. And this might be helpful for I think anyone who who is looking to travel for the first time since the pandemic. First things first, I want to say that it's extremely normal if you're feeling anxious about your upcoming flight during this pandemic. I mean, we haven't been on a plane or stepped into an airport in so long. For me, my last flight was easily one to one and a half years ago before the lockdown and the quarantine and so on and so forth happened. So it's normal to feel that you're worried, you're slightly more worried and you're slightly more afraid and you don't really know what to expect. Speaking from experience, it was quite anxiety inducing for me. I mean, you know, for the past, I think one year or so, we have been taught to basically isolate ourselves, distance ourselves from people and not be in a crowd or being surrounded by a lot of people. And going from that, you're suddenly enclosed in a in a, in a, you know in a in a plane with people whom you don't know, people whom you don't know their travel history, you don't know where they have been to, you don't know if they have been exposed to the virus, or if they themselves are carrying the virus. And looking back, I think that's like completely normal, and I want to assure you that you are gonna be fine. Because think about it this way, that's pretty much only so much that you can control. So I feel like as long as you're taking the necessary precautions, you're wearing your mask and the people on board your flight are equally as responsible as you, I think everything's gonna turn out just fine. The second thing that I wanna touch on is also to share with you a bit on what I feel on the overall experience. I would say flying during the pandemic is quite an experience on its own. Um, I actually flew from Changi Airport and Changi Airport is based in Singapore and Changi Airport is easily one of the busiest airports in the world and when I actually passed the immigration and when I was about to board, I had a complete shock of my life. I think to put it simply, just go check out what I'm seeing in my previous vlog but you know, you see all the shops are closed, there's literally nobody, it's as quiet as, you know, you can hear literally a pin drop. And then you begin to see like different zones within the airport marked off, you can't really access one place or another. Um, you know, everyone kind of have to stay within their own lanes. You see all the airport staff fully suited up in their PPE. It felt apocalyptic, you know, it felt like, okay, some shit is going on in this world. I used to travel a lot prior to the pandemic uh, for work or for leisure, and I've never seen Changi Airport to, you know, honestly in, in this side, and it was really surprising. And then when I actually landed in Amsterdam Airport, it was a complete different sight, right? Um, it felt as though the pandemic didn't happen at all. Um, I see travelers just walking as and where they would like. Shops are open, you're allowed to go into the shops to buy things. I even saw a dog at the airport. He's so cute. He or she is so cute. Anyways, so it, it was a very different sight, right? And this just goes to the point that I think different countries and different governments have different regulations. In Amsterdam, like even when I was waiting for my flight, there are notices that says like okay you have to keep like a one meter distance and so on and so forth but i don't really see people really implementing that um i still do people see people seated quite closely to one another i think people in general they, they still have their masks on so that's a good thing um but i think in general people it, it just feels a lot more relaxed and it feels a lot more normal now talking about the tips if you're actually planning for a trip, first thing that you should do when you're flying during this pandemic is to check the regulations. 
and what I mean by this is first thing you need to check the regulations of the country that you're visiting and also the country that you are leaving from in case you're actually thinking of coming back to the country you might want to know what are the implications that you will get from actually traveling do you have a special pass that basically allows you to come back or no right I think during this time regulations change like literally by the day if not by the minute and one moment you're allowed to fly here to there and one moment you're not anymore please 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 check the official government website do not trust any information that has been spread through like whatsapp or hearsays because you know broken telephone I mean it can either be outdated or it can either be not the most I would say accurate information that you can find out there this is also another thing that I almost missed is also check the regulations of your airlines please 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 check them this is something that I almost miss out I do notice that different airlines also impose different regulations for their travelers for example, for Singapore Airlines, they actually require you to take a PCR test 72 hours before the flight, regardless of whether the country that you're flying to requires you to do that or not. So one thing that you want to avoid is thinking that, oh, the country that you're going to requires you to just take P PCR test when you arrive and last minute realizing that you cannot board the plane because the plane actually mandates you to maybe get tested prior to your flight next talking about the pcr test should i take it should i not if it's not necessary for me i am kiasu i am the auntie who just want to get everything covered so even though klm didn't require it even though finland didn't require it before flying I still took my PCR test just to give me that extra sense of security. So I did my PCR test before even leaving Singapore and I had that result with me on hand just to make sure that wherever you're transiting, especially when you're traveling on a long haul flight and you're you know, transiting through different, um, I would say, destinations, this is so important. Just have it on hand with you. I think it's just an added security for people who are easily afraid and anxious like me out there. For Singapore, regardless of where you actually come from, you're required to take a PCR test within the country upon arrival. Uh, when I flew to Finland, it was a bit different. They give you the option of actually going through uh, quarantine or actually taking the PCR test at the airport without having to go through the quarantine. Uh, the thing is, if you take the PCR test at the airport, you need to then schedule another appointment seven days after and you need to be tested uh, negative for both to be declared okay and you can go about um, you know doing your whatever you want the third point that i want to say is get your papers in order throughout my trip uh, flying from singapore to finland i think immigration checkpoints tend to check for more documentation um, you know test results asking you more about your purpose of travel a lot more than non uh, i would say covid days um, I think right now because of the restrictions you can't just travel from one place to another so it's very important that you get your papers in order have them printed out and just have them with you I think speaking from experience because I flew my dad from Indonesia to Singapore the process of actually getting my dad to fly in from Indonesia to Singapore the approval process the quarantine process is actually quite a lengthy one so talking about singapore per se you can't just travel into singapore without like any valid reason you have to either be a long-term pass holder or you have to be a singapore citizen or a permanent resident there if you're actually tra thinking of traveling in um, it's either you have to let's say have a valid reasons like for example you're visiting your family that I mean immediate family like you have parents in Singapore you have kids in Singapore that you want to travel and see to uh, you kind of need a local sponsor to apply for an approval letter of entry to even enter Singapore itself and for my process like my dad the approval was almost immediate because you know he's just he's alone in Indonesia and he's coming to Singapore to basically see his kids now once the ALE has been approved 
now you need to sort out basically your quarantine arrangements you basically need to pay up front for the 14 day quarantine prior to flying into singapore and that cost around i think 2100 something yes that's inclusive of uh the pcr test that you would actually take at the end of your 14 day quarantine so once these two have been sorted out there's also a health declaration form that you need to fill out and you need to print out all these i would say documents or at least have it with you saved somewhere in your phone uh, just to show the immigration officers when you actually arrive that you already went through the necessary process and went through the necessary documentation to be able to enter Singapore and um, one more thing when you actually enter Singapore you don't know where you're going to be quarantined at with who at which hotel which room you don't know and you only know the moment you actually enter your room so yeah that's it for I think for Singapore um, I think the last point that I probably have to add um, if you're traveling and uh, this goes for anxious aunties or anxious people or kiasu people like myself is to get your own sanitary bag uh, different airlines will give you different types of sanitary bag at least KLM actually gave me a hand sanitizer and alcohol wipes but I don't think that was enough I'm pretty sure you can ask more from the airline but for me I actually brought my own so it's recommended that you bring at least a spare mask because if you're long you're flying on a long haul flight especially say 10 hours or so you do not want to be wearing the same mask throughout you want to at least change for your next leg of flight just make sure you also have extra alcohol wipes on hand to wipe down seats to wipe down maybe cutleries that you want to eat with or wipe your hands if you can't find anywhere to wash your hands i hope this video gives you a clear idea on what you need to do prior to flying uh, it's very difficult to cover all the def different regulations because people travel from different places it's really up to you to really go check it out um, but if there's anything else that you'd like to see please leave them in the comment down below please do not forget to like and subscribe as well so thank you guys for watching stay safe stay healthy i'll see you guys in the next video bye